In this video, we will look at applying validations to request fields in a Spring Boot REST application and how to provide meaningful validation errors using Spring Boot validation module. But before that, let's understand the need for validations. All of you would have done an online transaction with your credit or debit cards. There, you need to enter details such as card number, expiry, CVV, and name of card holder. After entering the details, you click submit and then further processing happens. But imagine what should happen if any of the above details is incorrect. The application should catch them right away before the processing starts, right? This is the rule of validations and they are very important for an application. Now let's see how to apply validations to fields of a request body in Spring Boot REST application. This is a Spring Boot project having only two dependencies, Spring Web and Validation. This is the main class of this application. Let's implement the card payment processing scenario to this application. Create a new class that represents the fields of a credit card in the incoming payment request. This class will have fields for card number, expiry, CVV, and card holder name. Generate debtor and setters. Create a controller class for exposing an endpoint. Add REST controller annotation to make it a Spring controller. Define a new method that will accept card object. We will be returning a string from this, so its type will be response entity of type string. Since we will be getting the object in request, provide it as argument and mark it with request body annotation. Return a string. In actual application, we should be calling a service method where the actual processing logic will be written. But since this video is aimed at explaining how validations work, this is not required. Add a post mapping annotation along with the URL since this method will handle HTTP POST request. Run the application. It has started at port 8080. Go to Postman and create a new POST request. URL will be localhost colon 8080 slash process, the same endpoint that we exposed from our REST controller. Add request body by going to body, raw, and JSON. Provide a JSON with keys matching with fields of card class and values in actual format. Card number is 16 digits, CVV is 3 digits, expiry in mm slash yy format, and name of card holder. Send. We got success message which means our application is working. Now suppose we send an incomplete card number. Send. It still works while it should not. Make the card number empty. It still works. Let's apply validations on the fields of our card class so that invalid input is stopped right away. Simply go to the class on whose fields we want to apply the validations. Now we can apply validation using annotations. Let's say we want to check that the card number should not be blank or null. Simply apply not empty annotation. We also want to check if it is of 16 characters. Apply length annotation with min and max set to 16. Similarly, we want to ensure that CVV is not null. Also, it should be a number. So, use digits annotation and to make the max digits as 3, use its integer attribute. CVV should also not be a decimal, so set fraction attribute to 0. Expiry should also be not null and so should be the cardholder name. Also, the expiry should be in mm slash yy format. So, we can apply a pattern annotation and provide a regular expression with its regex attribute. Regular expression for mm slash yy format would be caret to match the start characters 0 and 1 to 9 or 1 to match months from 0, 1 to 12, followed by slash and then two integer digits followed by dollar to match the end. Similarly, the cardholder name should contain only alphabets. So, we can provide a regular expression here as well with pattern annotation. Regular expression would be caret again to match the start of the value and a to z, capital A to capital Z, followed by dollar to match the end. Note that the annotations belong to jakarta.validation package. If you are using Spring Boot version before 3, then this package would be javax.validation. 
to enable these validations over the objects of this class, add valid annotation along with request body in the controller method. Run the application. Back to Postman, send the request. Look what we get. HTTP 400, which stands for bad request. This is because this request body does not comply with the validations that we just applied. If we look at the console logs, then it shows this error message. It has field name and a default message. This is fine. But this response is not at all user friendly as it does not tell the actual reason for which this request failed. So let's make it better and understandable. If you look at the console logs, it throws method argument not valid exception. We can catch this exception and return a valid response. But the question is, where do we catch it? If we try to catch it inside controller method, then it will be an error since this code is not throwing it. Further, if we somehow manage to catch it, then we have to do it for all methods of this controller. And not only this controller, but all the controllers of this application. The solution is to implement a centralized exception handler for field validations. Create a new class. Add REST controller advice annotation over it. This annotation is used for handling exceptions that arise in any of the controller classes. Define a method, which will return a map and will accept an argument of type method argument not valid exception, the class that we saw in the logs. Define a new hash map. This exception object has a get binding result method, which represents the result of field bindings in a request. Binding result has a get all errors method, which returns a list of all errors occurred when binding request value to object fields. We will iterate over these using for each. This object is of type object error and we will cast it to field error to get information about which field caused the error. We can get the name of field using its get field method and the validation error with its get default message method. Put the field name as key and error message as value in map. Return this map. Now, how does this method gets called? We need to apply another annotation which is exception handler followed by the exception type for which we want it to execute. This will be the same that is being thrown here. Finally, add a response status annotation to return the status code, which will be 400 for bad request. So, this class will be registered as exception handler for all controllers and whenever an exception of type method argument not valid exception is thrown from any controller, this method will be automatically called and this map will be sent in response along with this status code. Start the application. Back to Postman. Send. Look, we got a meaningful response now. Wait a minute. We should not have got any validation error for cardholder name since we are sending a valid value. Guess there is something wrong with the regular expression. Yes, we need to add a plus to match one or more occurrences and the parentheses are also not required. Restart the application. Send again. Works now. Since card number field has two validation rules, not empty and length validation with minimum and maximum length 16 and both of these apply to empty value, it might happen that error message changes randomly for empty value since the validations are applied in random order. So, if I send again, the error message might become this. Let's now change the format update. It gives an error. Let's also increase the length of CVV. We get an error message. So you can see that our validations are working fine. You can also set your own validation message for each of the validation types using message attribute. So for example, these messages do not make any sense to an end user. We should change the message of these fields to be more informative. Back to our domain class, add message attribute to expiry field and also to CVV field. Restart the application.
Now the messages are more informative and understandable. Also remember that with this method, the validations are performed before the request reaches the controller. So, if there is any validation failure, the response is returned before reaching the controller method and this code will never execute. All of Spring's validation support is based on Jakarta Bean validation specification, which you can find here. And here are the annotations that you can apply as validations. So, you can check if a value should be positive or negative. If a field has a date, then it should be of past or future. You can even validate email format, etc. To conclude, following are the steps to implement validations in a Spring Boot application. Add Spring Boot Starter Validation Dependency. Add validations over the domain class which is mapped to JSON request. Add valid annotation before request body in controller method. Implement validation error handler method in class that has rest controller advice annotation. This method should have exception handler annotation that handles method argument not valid exception and also accept an argument of type method argument not valid exception since this exception is thrown when validations fail. Return a map from this method with key as field name and validation error as value. That's it and you are good to go. This is all for the current video and I hope you liked it and I'll see you in the next one.